Welcome to the fluorocarbon family lecture. Um, a little bit to explain this title slide. Usually I present this course in the fall semester and usually this lecture is right around Thanksgiving. So I'm, I'm not just randomly twisted this year. This is a Thanksgiving themed uh, title slide. So the fluorocarbon family consists of these particular polymers. Uh, the big one being PTFE, and PTFE is polytetrafluoroethylene, most commonly known as Teflon. Uh, but there are a variety of other uh, fluorocarbons that are part of this family. Polychlorotrifluoroethylene, polyvinyl fluoride, that's the fluorine version of polyvinyl chloride. Polyvanillidine fluoride, again the fluoride version of polyvanillidine chloride. Fluorinated ethylene propylene copolymer and Teflon AF, which is an amorphous uh, version of Teflon. Teflon itself is very uh, crystalline. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the ones that are not Teflon first. So first I'm going to talk about PCTFE or polychlo polychlorotrifluoroethylene. It has a TG of 45 Celsius and a TM of 220 Celsius. This is the repeat unit structure of this. So it has three fluorines. So if you had ethylene, these would all be hydrogens. And so in this case, there's one chlorine and three fluorines. So trifluoro, one, two, three, chloro, uh, ethylene. This is a uh, semi-crystalline material. It is injection moldable and extrudable. And it has reduced viscosity compared to PTFE. This is mostly used in films, gaskets, and O-rings. Polyvinyl fluoride is the fluorine version of polyvinyl chloride. So in polyvinyl chloride, you would have a chlorine molecule or atom here, whereas this has a fluorine. Uh, this has a TG of negative 20 and a TM of 200. This is highly crystalline. It has poorer heat and chemical resistance compared to Teflon, and this is mainly used as a water-resistant film in lamination for aircraft construction. This is polyvanillidine fluoride, and so this is the fluoride version of uh, polyvanillidine chloride. So instead of chlorines being here, you have uh, fluorine atoms. This has a TG of negative 35 and a TM of 171. It is also highly crystalline. It has superior creep strength and wear resistance compared to Teflon, but it has poorer heat resistance than Teflon and good chemical resistance. This is typically used in pipes, tubing, wire coating, and high temperature valves and seals. This is fluorinated ethylene propylene copolymer. So this is a uh, copolymer of fluorinated ethylene and fluorinated propylene. So in, if this was uh, ethylene uh, repeat unit, these would all be hydrogens. If this was a propylene repeat unit, wherever you see an F would be a hydrogen. So in this case, these are all uh, replaced with uh, fluorine atoms. And this is a copolymer of tetrafluoroethylene and hexafluoropropylene. Uh, so it's not uh, tetrafluoroethylene homopolymer, it is copolymer. This has a TG of negative 11 Celsius and a TM of 290 Celsius. It is injection moldable, extrudable, and blow moldable. It has lower chemical resistance compared to PTFE, and this is typically used in lab containers and autoclave bottles because it's blow moldable. Teflon AF is an amorphous fluoropolymer. Uh, Teflon itself is highly crystalline, and so this is an amorphous version of Teflon. It is transparent because it is also amorphous, and that is why uh, it is made in an amorphous fashion. It is injection moldable, extrudable, and compressible, and the application for this is optics because you need something that is amorphous and therefore clear if you're using it for optical applications. So the major uh, uh, member of the fluorocarbon family is PTFE, and this is Teflon. It has a TG of 126 Celsius and a TM of 330 Celsius. This is how you make Teflon. Uh, you have tetrafluoroethylene monomer. It's polymerized by free, free radical polymerization to make polytetrafluoroethylene. So once again, if you had ethylene, these uh, fluorine atoms would all be hydrogens. Uh, and in the repeat unit in the structure, if you had ethylene, these would all be hydrogens, but they've all been replaced with fluorine atoms. This was invented and commercialized by DuPont in the 1950s, and it is avail available in granules, powder, and water-based dispersion. This is a true specialty thermoplastic, both in price and performance. And of course, this is under the trade name Teflon. Uh, Teflon has a white, uh, almost waxy appearance. This has a very high specific gravity. 
Uh, the strength of the fluorine carbon bonds is what gives it its high specific gravity. Uh, they are very, very strong bonds and they pack together very, very closely uh, in, in a semi-crystalline polymer. So that's why the density is also very high, higher than uh, uh, high density polyethylene. As a wide surface range of temperatures, its TG is 126 and its TM is 330. The thing about this is, is Teflon doesn't really melt. It becomes kind of an amorphous gel at uh, 327 Celsius, and that's kind of the form in which it's actually processed. It can be flexible up to negative 268 Celsius, and it is useful up to 280 Celsius. It retains its properties. This is, a, again, a very crystalline polymer. It has high structural symmetry and very strong fluorine carbon bonds, and both of those uh, contribute to the high level of crystallinity. This has excellent chemical inertness. Uh, it doesn't react with anything, which is why it's often used in chemical laboratories. Uh, you have to have a really, really exotic fluoride solvent, uh, which is nothing that the average consumer or the average person in industry will actually come in contact with. Uh, acids, alkali, organic solvents have no effect on PTFE, and because of these very strong carbon-fluorine bonds. These carbon-fluorine bonds don't break even at elevated temperatures. So all of the properties of Teflon have to do with the nature of the carbon-fluorine bond. Uh, one of the reasons why uh, Teflon seals are used, aside from the fact that they are uh, uh, nonstick, is that they are chemically inert. And so we often use chemical seals in between pieces of glassware so that glassware doesn't stick together. So even if you're boiling benzene for eight hours uh, and it's in contact with that Teflon seal, it will have no effect on the performance of that Teflon seal. It won't break down. Uh, the other way to uh, get glassware to keep from freezing is to put grease on it, and you can't use boiling benzene with regular grease. So that's why we move to Teflon seals. They're chemically inert, and they uh, do the job. So they keep your glassware from freezing together. And what I mean by freezing together is if you have a flask and you put a condenser on it, they have ground glass joints. And we cover the one side of the ground glass joint, the male side of the ground glass joint, with a PTFE sleeve. And that keeps it from freezing into the neck of the flask. Because uh, typically you want to be able to s remove that condenser from the flask to get your product out. So if they freeze together uh, because of you know uh, some sort of product getting stuck in there and, and uh, jamming the condenser into the ground glass joint on the flask, um, that can be a problem. So we avoid that. We used to avoid it with uh, grease. Grease it up and then uh, they'd come apart, but that grease can melt and then run into your flask, into your product. But Teflon doesn't do that. It avoids that problem. It also has excellent heat resistance. So again, if you're going to boil benzene, it's going to get a little hot. Uh, the heat deflection temperature of Teflon is 280 Celsius. Uh, I know that I've done condensation polymerizations that are about 220, and the sleeve that I used was completely unaffected. Uh, PTFE is non-flammable. It will not support combustion, not at all. You can't get this stuff to burn for anything. Its limited oxygen index of Teflon is over 95. You, it has, you have to be almost in complete, pure oxygen to get to even force ignition of Teflon. This has very, very low moisture absorptivity, so much, much less than 0.01% over 24 hours for an eighth inch thick specimen. What that means is uh, you're getting no moisture absorptivity whatsoever, r reasonably speaking. It has extra oil insulation properties. Uh, when you compare it to a thermoset, uh, it actually has better properties than uh, an a silica filled epoxy thermoset for electrical insulating properties. So um, it is superior in terms of its electrical insulating properties. This is a very low coefficient of friction. Uh, it has, and that's what gives it the non-stick quality. Uh, you cannot stick Teflon to anything else, not to it, <laughs> and that's why um, Teflon is used for creating non-stick surfaces, uh, not just in uh, on ground glass joints in laboratory glassware, but on your average um, kind of lower end uh, non-stick skillets and cookware. Um, uh, but part of the properties that are unique also cause other problems, uh, which we'll talk about later. But uh, it is also uh, superior weather resistance. Teflon is not affected by UV radiation whatsoever. The carbon fluorine bond is very tight. You can heat it up, you can zap it with electricity, you can try and shear it, you can do all sorts of things to it. It is not affected. Uh, but there are problems. Uh, part of the reason why uh, it has such a high uh, uh, melt viscosity is because of the strength of those carbon fluorine bonds and the high crystallinity. Uh, it is really, really difficult to process with conventional in, uh, thermoplastic methods. So conventional extrusion and injection molding are pretty much out. This is typically processed via sintering. And so basically your Teflon powder is preformed uh, into a shape, and then the preform is heated. 
and then those they kind of become an amorphous gel and they kind of stick together and then you cool them back down and they kind of coalesce together. So it's mostly by compression molding and very, very slow extrusion for tubes and rods. Now they do make uh, Teflon piping, usually for specialty or laboratory applications, and they make that by very slow extrusion. Uh, there's also Teflon coatings, and this is done by dispersion coating of the melt. So they spray a substrate with the powder, they heat it past the TM to give that amorphous gel, and they cool it back down to give you about a one and a half micron thick coating on a surface. That's how uh, cookware is, is done. Um, it is at very, very high temperatures, so well above uh, the degradation temperature, it gives off poisonous gases. It will give off fluorine gas uh, above those temperatures. Now, if you've ever heard about the toxicity of chlorine gas, fluorine gas is worse. So if you manage to get Teflon above that temperature, uh, it's, it's not a good deal. So you have to make sure you're very adequately venting anything uh, that processes Teflon in case you actually reach that upper temperature and degradation uh, occurs. It is opaque. Teflon is opaque. It's very highly crystalline, and it cannot be made transparent unless you're using a specific AF grade. Uh, it is very expensive. So this is a true specialty thermoplastic, meaning that it has it doesn't really have very good mechanical properties, which I'll talk about in a second, and the price is very high. You're only buying this if you really need its nonstick um, inertness type uh, uh, properties. Uh, it cannot be adhesively joined. So it is inert. No solvents really affect it, and you need solvents to affect it in order to uh, um, solvent weld. So you really can't join this with adhesives or with solvents or whatnot. It has very low creep resistance, very low wear resistance. Um, uh, it's lower than those of engineering thermoplastics for sure. Uh, and here's my little PSA for you. If you have a nonstick skillet that has that black coating, that's Teflon. And if it has been um, scratched in any way, throw it out and get a new one. Not only will it lose its nonstick properties, that Teflon is flaking off and getting into your food and you're eating it, which is not good for you. So if you have a nonstick skillet that is in poor shape, get a new one. Uh, if you're going to upgrade, get one with a white coating, which is actually ceramic, which you can use metal utensils on. You can't use metal utensils on PTFE because they have very low wear resistance. And the high cost and the lack of ease of processing really do limit its usage only to the applications that really require its inertness or nonstick properties. This is used in things that require those properties, so mold release agents, o-rings, seals, rollers, gaskets, some very specialty type of tubing, stopcocks, ski linings, ovenware insulation, heat cables, aerospace parts, and nonstick frying pans, which is the uh, application that most consumers have uh, contact with. So here are some of your various applications. So here's your nonstick muffin pan, your nonstick skillet. These are the ones that your everyday consumer would have uh, contact with. Uh, there is a Teflon coating fabric protector, which uh, does work. It stuff beads up like you've waxed your car. Uh, if you've ever had the joy of doing plumbing, Teflon tape is part, probably part of your repertoire. Um, it doesn't stick to itself even. You have to uh, hone your technique when you're using Teflon tape, but it really does work for sealing uh, typical uh, threaded uh, pipe uh, joints. Uh, here are some gaskets and o-rings and then uh, specialty tubing for things that require the inertness. And oftentimes in, a, in specialty wiring applications you will have your wired core, a uh, Teflon dielectric coating, a metallic shield, and then another plastic jacket. Uh, this plastic jacket is usually polyethylene in this particular case. You're only using the PTFE for its dielectric properties. This concludes the fluorocarbon family. From here we will move on to cellulosics which is, and cellulosics is our final lecture for this course.